Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central, and we're going through the 2021 OWASP Top 10 Security Risks, and coming in at number seven is identification and authentication failures. All right, so this deals with um, identification authentication. So this was previously known as broken authentication, uh, and this has slid down the list from the 2017, it was in the second, it was number two on the 2017, so now it's slid down to number seven. But nonetheless, it's still on the top 10 and it's still a big deal, right? So this obviously deals with user's identity, authentication, session, session management. All of these things are critical to, uh, to protect against these authentication-related attacks, right? So, you know, if you have an application, uh, you know, I'll just put your app right here. You've got, you know, users that want to access your application and there needs to be some kind of, you know, authentication mechanism that happens to make sure, hey, are you, um, you know, who, who you say you are, like, or, or who are you, right? That's the authentication part, right? And so, uh, so there needs to be some sort of that. So if there's, if there's, uh, if, the, if that's broken or misused or misplaced or, you know, vulnerable, then you've got problems, right? All right. So if the application itself um, is, you know, permits things like credential stuffing attack, where the attacker has a list of you know, valid usernames and passwords, and I'll get into that here in just a second, then, uh, then you could be vulnerable to this uh, risk. Um, if, you, if the application is built in such a way that it permits brute force or other automated attacks, uh, then this could be a problem. Or like if, you're, uh, if your password policy on your application uh, permits, you know, weak or default or well-known passwords, like if you allow someone to just say, you know, admin, admin, you know, the, as the username and password, that's not good, right? Um, the, uh, there's also the, the password recovery, so like a credential recovery or forgotten password process, like knowledge-based answers. I mean, I've seen this a lot uh, where you say, hey, what was your, you know, what was your teacher's name in the first grade or whatever it is, right? Well, those answers can be found out, and so that could be a, an unsafe method of password, uh, you know, recovery process, right? Um, so things like that, if there's, if there's like missing multi-factor authentication, then that's a problem as well. So those are some things to kind of keep in mind. That's what we're talking about here in terms of the authentication related uh, attacks, all right? So um, I mentioned credential stuffing a second ago, and I'll just go into what that is. Let's, uh, let's say you have, instead of just users, you, now you have an attacker, right? So an attacker is going gonna, is gonna to come after your application, and let's say you have a, you know, slash login, page and um, so you got da 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 www dot whatever slash login and on that page you have you know user uh, name and then password right and you have the little blanks for hey type in your username and your password and all and all is good right well what an attacker will do on a credential stuffing attack is he'll get a list of you know username and password and you can get these all over the place um, you can get them, you know, for free online. You can you can dig into the to the dark web and buy these things, you know, like known good usernames and passwords to all kinds of stuff. And what happens is, as human being users, if I'm going to Netflix, then I'm going to type in my username and I'm going to set a password, right? Um, well, then when I go over to Disney Plus or I go over to some other streaming Hulu channel or whatever, then I'm going to use I'm probably going to use that same username and that same password because I can and it's easier for me to remember. And so attackers will take advantage of that, and they'll um, they'll download via these you know um, these data breach or these you know exposed usernames and passwords, which happen all the time. They'll get these lists of usernames and password combinations, and then they'll say, "Hey, I as the attacker am going to stuff those usernames and passwords into the application via this login page, you know, here and here, right? So I'm going to use my list of known good usernames and passwords here. So Again, let's say that um, an attacker knows that you as the user have a username and a password that works on like Netflix, right? Um, but they don't know if it works on Disney Plus or they don't know if it works on, you know, your favorite streaming source.com, right? Um, but because of the human nature of, of, you know, us human users, we tend to reuse these things. And so they're going to take that known good Netflix in this example and use it on your, your, your favorite streaming service.com 
login page and lo and behold, they're gonna find out that, hey, that actually worked because the user used the same credentials, right? Anyway, that's the nature of the credential stuffing attack. I say all that to say, if your application is vulnerable to that type of an attack, then, that, then that's, what, that's, what, that's one of the uh, scenarios that this security risk is talking about, all right? Another one that I'll mention too is about session timeouts. So I'll put uh, just maybe up here, I'm kind of drawing all over the board now, but here we'll say session, session timeout, right? And this is, let's say you're at the, you know, you're at the public, public library, because everyone loves the public library, right? And you go there and you read books and you do all kinds of great stuff. You're studying, you're, you're improving yourself as a human being, and it's awesome. Um, well, you sit down at the computer there, right? And, uh, and you do all your work, and that's amazing. And then instead of logging out of the computer, maybe you just close the browser tab and you walk away, right? And now you've, let's say you use Safari or Chrome or Firefox or whatever it is, and you just like close the, the tab, but you don't log out uh, you know, of, the, of the application or of the computer. Um, and then, so you've walked away, right? Well, then here comes someone else, and then they sit down, at the computer and they start typing away and then they you know that that leaves it open for them to steal that session and then start to use that as you and impersonate you all right so if the application that you had been accessing doesn't have proper timeouts set then a user could come in and start using you know your basically use your session and, and impersonate you right so um, so anyway so that's uh, that that would be a problem as well so so proper session timeout would be another authentication uh, problem, right? Okay, so how do you guard against this? So wherever possible, you need to implement multi-factor authentication. So you can prevent some of this, uh, some of this credential stuffing problem, right? Um, so like their stolen credentials get reused and all that, everything that I just talked about. Um, if you're the application owner, don't ship the application. Don't, don't send it to production with like default credentials, like admin users. Like I said, if, you, if you're allowing admin, admin, then that's not good. So change those. Um, implement uh, password checks on your application. So, you know, you can test, test for passwords or test for, you know, new passwords or change passwords. And they've got, yeah, I mean, you can go out and find these, you know, top thousands kind of worst password list they're very that's very accessible and you can use that as your standard to say hey if any password on my application is in that list then i'm going to tell that user you got to change it or frankly i'm going to i'm going to not even allow the user to use that password to begin with that's really what you ought to do um, you can align your password length and complexity and rotation policy against some really strong standards. There's a, there's a NIST standard, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST 800-63B guidelines um, outline this. It's in uh, section 511, 5.1.1, uh, if you want to go check that out. That's, that's a really good standard to use. Um, you, can, you can limit or you can delay failed login attempts. Uh, so, you know, if, if, if an attacker is trying to come in and they're like, oh, man, I messed up. I thought I had it, but I didn't. Then you can delay. You can say, hey, you can't log in again for the next two minutes or whatever. Now, you want to be careful on that because you don't want to lock out legitimate users who legitimately forgot their, their password, right? So that could create a bit of a denial of service for your legitimate users. So don't do that. So there's kind of that balance to, to strike there. Um, and, then, uh, and then maybe the last thing I would mention as a good, you know, guard against this security risk is that you can use server-side uh, secure built-in session managers uh, that generate a new random session ID uh, that has high entropy after you log in, right? So this can be some of that session problem. Um, in fact, like session timeout, but this isn't session ID. So the session identifier, um, also it should not be in the URL. So we go back to the, the URL of your actual application. Uh, it, the session identifier does not, should not be in the URL you need to have it in a, in a highly secure place and you need to invalidate that after logout or after there's a certain idle time or if there's an absolute timeout like, hey, I'm going to expire this session after X amount of time, you need to set that up. So that will help with some of those uh, session attacks uh, that could be problematic with this security risk. So, uh, so hey, we want you to stay safe out there. And I want to say thanks for watching this Lightboard lesson video with us today. If you like this thing, you can click up here on our Dev Central logo and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we'll see you guys out there in the community.